Hey, welcome back to our continued coverage of House of X and Powers of X. Today, House of X number five, Society, or as I like to call it, Apocalypse Now. Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, we're going to talk about House of X number five. Uh, spoiler alert, it's got Apocalypse in it, right? He's right on the cover, so sorry... Uh, if you don't like to know that kind of thing, but uh, unless you bought it with your eyes closed, you probably already knew. So we're going to talk about uh, the events of this issue. We're going to go into some of the text backup pieces, and we'll go into some uh, some more speculation on where this is all going. So first of all, this was uh, a, a good issue, uh, a lot of meat to it. Uh, but it's one of the first spots where I went, I really scratched my head because something happened that uh, we talked about in our last video. And what, well, you know what? Why am I bothering talking about this when we can jump straight into the Million Dollar Comics cam? Um, so House of X number five basically begins right with the reveal that all those characters who died in the last issue, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, uh, and a couple of others, Angel as well as some others, uh, basically didn't die, right? Because what's been revealed is that there's a special combination of five special mutants that when they work together can resurrect uh, a, a mutant's body, basically. Could completely recreate that mutant's uh, powers and abilities and body up to a certain age, right? And those five mutants, well, we'll talk about them in the text uh, when we talk about the text piece, pieces a little bit. Um, but basically, um, they, so once they've got the body in place, it's been it's now revealed that Professor X at Cerebro has a dual purpose and always has. It's not just to detect mutants. It's also to be able to download their consciousness and their essence, if you will, and store it for later use. Now combine this with what we learned in last week's Powers of X number four, that in our reality, uh, Mr. Sinister, the whole time that we've known Mr. Sinister, he has been collecting the DNA of ostensibly every mutant that ever has been. Um, at least since that time. And has had his memory tampered with so he doesn't even realize that he's been doing that. Okay. So, what this means, what this all means is that now with these five mutants, we can recreate any mutant that we've got the stored DNA from. And we've got the stored DNA because of Mr. Sinister. Uh, and then thanks to Cerebro's newly found uh, upgrades, we can download any previously stored copy of a mutant's consciousness back into the husk, if you will, that's what they call it, that was created for them. Now, can you take the, somebody else's mind and put it into a different husk? That's unknown, and they go into that a little bit in the extensive text pieces that talk about resurrection. We'll go into that. So, again, House of X number five, we get... Nice double page credit sequence. Nice way to spread out what used to be like a little box on the splash page into a nice double page spread. All right, do what you gotta do. Um, and so we've revealed that this team of five mutants, right? And, and this team, just to say the five mutants involved are not mutants that I was necessarily expecting to see. Some because I didn't know they were alive. Others because they're such like recent additions to the canon. Um, anyway, we're talking about uh, Hope Summers, uh, the character known as Tempest, and Gold Balls, both of who came from the Bendis run on X-Men a few years ago. That was kind of just a little bit forgettable in my mind, although I do remember those characters. Um, uh, and one called Elixir and a, and a, uh, someone, and, and, and Proteus, right? The, um, the, the dead son of, uh, uh, Professor X and Moira McTaggart, right? And, and, and his powers are burning him out. But because they can resurrect now, 
they keep like a husk of his body on hand and they just reboot him every week or so after he burns out. And so these five mutants together um, can can bring back dead bodies of, of, of basically any mutant that ever has been. Anybody, I guess, that's been stored by Mr. Sinister and ostensibly he's been, ostensibly he's been storing everybody's. So, okay, what is this? This is... Well, it's an obvious like plot device. It's like a get out of jail free card for any situation that instantaneously lowers the stakes of any situation these characters are in, right? If if we had known this previous to the prior two issues we read where they went on their mission into outer space, we really wouldn't have felt as much urgency or cared as much. I mean, granted, to the ones that are dying, like to the Cyclops and Wolverine that died, um, they to them they it was them dying and they were never coming back. So Wolverine's heartwarming talk with Nightcrawler about wh- whether there's a heaven or not. It, it you know if he, he knew he was going to be uh, resurrected, but to him you know these memories were going to go away. This is his life he had lived till this point of point in time. Okay, now all right they can clone these mutants, but how do they get Wolverine's claws back? Well. You can kind of explain that away by the presence of Proteus, who's bringing a touch of reality altering into this mix of powers that we'll talk about. Um, Okay, so Cyclops is back, everybody's back, status quo. Um, And we decide, you know, they celebrate these, these newly resurrected mutants and welcome them back into the fold, right? And we'll come back here to this double page spread on resurrection that goes pretty specifically into the process and, and implications. More than a double page, there's three pages of text material here. Um, moving on, we get to see uh, in Washington, D.C., um, the mutants are sort of assembled. And, you know, they're all just kind of like talking to each other telepathically and heavily implying or if not outright stating that... Um, uh, Emma Frost is manipulating like Washington politicians behind the scenes to get them to cooperate with the mutants and Xavier is like explicitly for that. Like I salute you. Okay. Um, next we get a, a, another uh, three piece text, three page text piece. This could have been one page. This could have been less than a page, but whatever. And this tells us basically the entire world has accepted uh, the mutants and Krakoa and their deal, right, where the mutants are offering these amazing wonder drugs in exchange for um, acknowledgement of the mutant nation and acceptance, right? And it's been accepted by basically everybody with some exceptions. So ba- broken down, uh, and we'll come back to this at the end, but we can see a map. Basically, the black parts, most of the world that uh, is uh, uh, on firmly on the mutant diplomacy side, and some of the red areas... Some hot spots, including some uh, little unexpected little spots in there, um, are not, right? Um, we'll come back to this at the end. Uh, next, really the big reveal here is that now that the news has been announced and the, the diplomacy is, has taken place, um, now the calls come out to mutants, right? To call the mutants back to Krakoa. And this includes a lot of different things right this includes because this is giving amnesty to mutant villains right so that's where we see in this first wave is a is a whole lot of different mutant villains i need some help from you guys out there to identify them all but i recognize some guys i didn't expect to see in here um and a whole lot of characters that i'm not even totally pod gorgon i recognize uh of course mr sinister um this guy here, I forget, is it like M- Mentalo or, or or he's like an Avengers villain, as I remember. But anyway, all of this leading up to the ultimate reveal uh, of of Apocalypse. That Apocalypse has been invited to in- enjoy the amnesty and come join the mutants. And there's a you know Wolverine was sort of like really questioning Magneto and and uh, uh, Xavier, being like you know there's some people that are just beyond redemption. Are you sure it's not too late? to like not invite Apocalypse to join our team. You know what I mean? Um, But Apocalypse comes in and makes nice. And, uh, you know, he's like, you know what? Why would I, why would it be a problem? All I've ever wanted is to raise up mutant kind. I see you, my children, have taken it upon yourselves and taken the initiative. And uh, and you're doing great. I love it. 
so um, I'm part of the team and he bows his head and he takes the oath of loyalty and and, and joins the team and Apocalypse is on the X-Men um, of course we come into the last final quote if you are us then be with us come home from Magneto we, we uh, take a look at the chronology and we notice that this was a key point the red issues are key points here House of X number 5 we've only got 3 issues left and 1 key issue the final issue Powers of X number 6 uh, what else have we got here? Um, well, this, we uh, read this. We translated this one next time. Uh, last time it says uh, uh, "next" for the children, but now we've got a new one, which uh, I've taken the time to translate for you, so you don't have to. You're welcome. And this one says, "Then I am not ashamed of what I am." And this is for House of X number six. Coming in a couple of weeks. Wow, a lot of stuff to unpack today. So let's go back to the um, text sections for a second. We can take them in reverse order. Look at the uh, the mutant nations that have not accepted, um, rather the, the the nations of the world that have not accepted the mutants. And some of them are for ideological or political reasons, right? Places like Iran and North Korea, or in this case, Madripoor. Some of these are fictional, some of these are real. I love that. Marvel likes to mix those up a little bit. In Europe, for instance, Russia, neither Russia nor Latveria uh, are accepting. Like uh, Clearly, Latveria is, is, is probably has some kind of alliance with Russia. Uh, in South America, Brazil. And that's one of the bigger ones that's closer to home. Uh, and, and some other uh, uh, South American nations. Central American nation of Honduras for political reasons. And, and, and then in Africa, we've got Wakanda. And it says for the reason they do not need mutant drugs. And also these several other African nations that are part of the Wakandan Economic Protectorate as well. So Wakanda's like, you know what? If all you've got to offer us is wonder drugs, we're good. So um, we're going to wait it out for now. Interesting. You know, these are two... These are gonna, there's probably going to be some kind of a conflict between these two nations in the future, and that could be that can make for some interesting comics. All right, let's go to Resurrection. Right, this is the, the uh, this is good. This is a little bit difficult because this is the first part where I'm going. Wow, that was kind of cheap, right? In, in our last review, I said you know, longtime watcher, frequent commenter J.K. mentioned mentioned to me that you know maybe. These could be clones that were killed. And I was like, you know what? That's too much of a letdown after all this drama and high stakes about suicide missions and you will be remembered and everything else. Granted, that was maybe a, a, an analogy. Maybe going back and reading that, it's more like, you know, we'll just reboot you, so no worries. Um, but it does lower the drama and the stakes if you know that. So um, uh, kudos to Hickman for, uh, for using that, the, creating that high stakes drama, I guess. But now you've got a situation where nobody can die, right? Anybody can be rebooted. If they die, as long as they got a recent enough backup copy, Charlie can reboot them. So uh, that like dramatically lowers the stakes. And I can't believe that this is going to stick around permanently. I feel like we're going to learn stuff about the mysteries of Krakoa and what have you. Uh, but anyway, the five... Uh, Mutants, and they go into some. He goes into some theories here and talk about it, that. Look, there's these five mutants, each of which has special powers, right? Uh, we've got Fabio uh, Fabio Medina Gold Balls. This was a character that Bendis created, and he's a character who just created these weird gold balls. That was his power, and he could create un unlimited amounts of them, though. And they're some kind of biological matter, heavy. Nobody knew what they were, so it's revealed. Uh, in this issue, I think in this issue, I don't think it was ever revealed before this. They say recently it was discovered they were eggs. Okay? So they're eggs, but they're not really like going to hatch into anything because they're not viable for whatever reason he creates these non-viable eggs. Okay, interesting mutant power. Um, but then we get the touch of Proteus who can alter reality, right? So he touches them and he makes them viable. And then... Uh, we inject them with preserved DNA of a mutant, thanks to Mr. Stinister's mutant DNA library, right? And then Elixir, this was a character who I didn't remember. Um, 
he would kickstart the process of cellular replication, right? He has some kind of healing powers. Um, after that, they had a mutant embryo, which they needed to mature. Bring in another Bendis creation, Tempest, who has these sort of time-altering powers. She can slow down, speed up time, etc. So she brings the fetus to full term and beyond, aging it into like a fully aged up, powered up, husk if you will that has all the dna and everything of of uh this person but none of the personality none of the memories none of the thoughts and dreams and hopes and prayers and whatever um so enter charlie x and the newly enhanced cerebro which right we learn has always been this is explicitly um stated here it says all this time Everyone has misunderstood what Cerebro really was. Yes, with it, Charles could locate any mutant in the world, but that eventually became the secondary function of the machine. The first was copying the mind, the essence, the anima of any mutant Xavier found so he could one day put a soul back into its mutant shell. So, in other words, he's been making backup copies of mutants from day one, but he could never do anything with them. There was nothing he could put them back in. Until this moment. Was he ever looking for a way to create that? Did I mean, because did he know this was going to happen? Maybe based on some info Moira knew from perhaps one of the miss Moira knew from one of the missing lives, maybe timeline six or maybe one of the other timelines, maybe the same five mutants developed. Anyway, this is another uh sort of like a layering on of mythology to to, to the x-men now that so now instead of being based out of the x mansion or like australia like they used to be right they've moved around so now it's all about uh krakowa and uh, it's a mutant nation and we can reboot any mutants that we want oh yeah and we're getting so good at this process that eventually we're going to be able to do thousands of these things these guys a day and we're going to be able to resurrect the entire mutant nation of of uh, Genosha, Genosha, eventually, like within 50 years or something, we can do it if we get up to speed and go faster and faster. So, like, they're aiming to resurrect every mutant that ever was. Sinister got the DNA of all whatever it was, 16 million mutants. <clears throat> okay. And Charlie backed up all their memories, 16 million of them. All this time without knowing what he was going to do with them or what was going to... I, this, I don't know. The one thing I do know is I, I've got enough faith in, in Hickman, right, as a writer to um, to not abuse this. And I think, frankly, by the end of this series that we will have to lose this unlimited rebooting ability. Uh that's just my opinion because it lowers all the dramatic tension, right? For any kind of action story, if nobody can die. Um, of course, maybe, you know, all that would have to change is maybe Professor X dies, but he goes into that. If one of the five dies, it says they could fill in with one of them with mimic or sync or somebody else who can mimic other mutant powers. Um, and that Professor X is needed now to do the mind rebooting part, but they could train a bunch of telepaths and get them hooked up with Cerebro and they would be able to do this too. And then we'll have this giant mutant copying machine and we can bring back all what the mutants who, you know, that ever were. I don't think this is a, what's going to happen, but I think what it is is a cool plot device to let Hickman bring back any mutants that he wants uh, that have been dead for a long time. Like they killed certain characters like the Blob or other classic characters over the years uh, that, uh, you know, maybe he has an interest in and wants to bring them back so he can scratch that itch and, and bring back some of his favorites. That would be pretty cool. Um, so one uh, last tidbit I want to talk about here is about Apocalypse. And I'm going to go back to last week's uh, Powers of X uh, number four to those secret tips uh, from Mr. Sinister. So let's 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 slip back into the Million Dollar Comics camp for a second and check out Sinister Secret number eight, okay? So for years, this fittest of all mutants has routinely surrounded himself with a particularly numbered entourage. These hangers-on stick around for a while 
until they are eventually replaced with newer, more exciting members. What most people don't know is that if the original members returned, these pretenders would be dropped so fast their heads would spin. I, to me, it's really it was really obvious even last time when I read this, this has to be talking about Apocalypse. And especially when we learned previously that his original four horsemen were somehow trapped when Krakoa split off from its original parent island and these hellish creatures and everything else. So could Apocalypse have a secret hidden agenda here? Does he want to reunite with his original horsemen and uh, bring about his uh, predictions and, and prophecies and whatever? You know, when your name's Apocalypse, people should naturally be suspicious of you. That's all I'm going to say, okay? So... But you know what you should not be suspicious of? You should not be sp suspicious of my motivations because, man, I make these videos, but I do them out of love. Love for comics, love for the medium, love for the industry. House of X is exciting people in a way that a comic hasn't for a while. I don't normally like weekly comic book series, but man, this one has dramatic, important things happening every each and every week. It's getting people, I see people showing up at the stores earlier and earlier on Wednesdays and talking about this book and being excited about it and speculating about it, right? So thank you for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing and doing all that you do to support this channel. We're going to keep the uh, House of X, Powers of X stuff coming as fast as the books come uh, because this has been some of the most popular content ever on the channel and I want to thank you for it and we will see you next time.